Hi, this is Dr. Shweta Aradhya and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for all the love and the care that you have been showering across the globe. I was a skeptical neurologist and I, I, I constantly tell people that life is all about experiments and experiences. And I always would like to challenge every single thing that comes up and, and what is that is what you should do as well. Now I'm in a beautiful, beautiful setting here. As you can see, I'm out of my studio, home studio. I'm in a beautiful place in south of India called Tiruvannamalai. This is the Arunachala Shiva, the beautiful temple and the beautiful, beautiful the mountain which is considered to be the Sakshat Shiva or Sakshat Good Lord. Now, why do we need these kind of breaks or why do we need to recharge? Why do we need to refresh ourselves? Now, taking a walk alone in the nature can be extremely powerful. Being with nature can be very, very powerful. I live in Dubai. Dubai is all about, uh, I, mean, I think Dubai is now so-called problematic about traffic. <laughs> of course, having said that Dubai has the best of the facilities, Dubai has all the urban things that you can ever imagine and have. Now, living in Dubai does not allow me to give that experience or that centeredness to me. Now, when we go and take a walk, and especially a barefoot walk, I would request every one of you to at least five minutes spend time connected to that nature or having a barefoot walk all across either in your garden or outside or simply even just on the ground what is happening is as you are doing that there is a shamanic frequency of the earth which is seven hertz which is like a slow sinusoidal rhythm and if any of you remember the four brain waves that we have been talking about one of them is alpha alpha is 8 to 12 hertz the moment you do and be with the nature you immediately click that alpha which means you become calm you become relaxed all the hyper functioning of the urban nature which is beta 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 gets stopped so automatically you refresh or you rejuvenate so the purpose of these kind of getaways is that however i was here on a special invitation and opportunity from antakaran and Nilayam. it's a beautifully located ashram it's one of those at the foothills of the arunachala shiva the mountain and what we studied was the effect of a particular vedic chant a particular vedic hymn on the brain and I was extremely delighted and fortunate to be also listening and essentially having a participation in this regards because I know what is happening to my brain or to my mind so when why is it important to visit any such facility which allows you to also passively get that benefit so wherever possible whenever possible try to meditate in a group try to sing in a group try to chant in a group this brings something called the coherence the amplitude and the frequency of the chanting which is happening in multiple people amplifies we have been talking about the chanting benefit for the kids we have been talking about please look at my previous videos we have been talking about the meditation the neuro types of meditation what is the good thing for you as individualized prescription we have been talking about listening to uh, chanting we have been talking about Om, a universal sound, it really does not matter. In fact, as I came to this place, I am going to share also in a separate video. We did look at post Azan, what is happening. Thank you for all the suggestions also, which has been coming through. We went through post uh, Shabad, when, when we are singing the Shabad, what is happening in the brain? Anything which is done with the intention, with the intention of offering to something higher, to something supreme automatically brings that coherence and this was one of those experiences what we found in the brain was extremely interesting and amazing most people who walked in of course we did put uh, the headgears what we call electroencephalogram ECG is what you measure for the heart EEG is what you measure for the brain. What we did want to study was as they are entering into this particular offering, which is 151 people chanting 11 times a particular Vedic mantra, particularly in this case was Rudram chanting, what is happening to their brains. So one scan as they enter into the premises and second scan after an 11 round chanting of the Rudra Suptam. And what was found was that most people had automatically this alpha. Please have alpha breaks in your life. Please sit five minutes in your daily routine to close your eyes. There is no other way to feel that alpha. 
to be with that calm uh, self of yours. Alpha is very, very, very important. Alpha deficit leads to anxiety, worrying. You have all the stressors, burnout. If you do have beta, constantly beta firing, you do suffer from lack of sleep. You do suffer from uh, disconnectedness to the people. You cannot function well. So having that alpha connectedness is extremely important. So walking in the nature, being where there is a lot of coherent chanting or coherent meditation happening. Because sometimes, you know, you have to do effortful things. This takes away the effort. You automatically now are a part of that alpha. So that was the third important thing which happened was people started to produce something called gamma. In fact, in a couple of George Dispenza's work also, this has been shown that when many people do meditation together, when many people are offering a certain hymn, a certain traditional chant, a certain Buddhist chant, whatever the chant may be, what happens is the gamma increases. Gamma is the fastest wave. It's like having a Ferrari in your brain. Ferrari is the fastest car or Porsche or whatever it is, which is very fast. It allows you to function better think clearly, have a fantastic memory, have complete attention and focus, be at the problem and have the solution even before you can think what can be the outcome of it. So essentially, yes, problems are part of life. Life is challenging. Life will throw in certain things. But what is important is preparedness. So that allows you to prepare, that allows you to be always ready. And these kind of modulation is extremely important and necessary and my own experience as I did also participate in this was extremely interesting. So there are few people who are interoceptive in nature. They connect to their body and it is very 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 important to listen to your body, to listen to your mind, to listen to your brain. A lot of people don't even understand when a big tumor is growing in the let's say in the abdomen why they don't understand why an ultrasound should tell you what is going on in your body because you are not connected inside there is a part in the brain which is called the insula and the cingulate gyrus these are part of the limbic functions and also a little bit portions of the front part of the brain which is very important for you to have that connectedness to understand what is happening inside your body inside your brain it is very important to develop these because before a doctor tells you you have a problem, you should be getting that hint. You should be getting that inner voice telling you to stop to eat a certain thing or do it differently. So what I felt was that inside me, there was a complete blissful calm which was there. Now we live in a world where calmness is very difficult to achieve. So these are the places, these are the efforts that you do to absolutely immediately achieve that state immediately achieve that purposeful being state which is very difficult otherwise and i call it as a simple modern day hack so what do you do you go to a refreshing or a relaxing place walk in the nature and i do see unfortunately people going into the nature and then doing the exact same thing that you have been doing at home getting onto your phone, getting onto your laptops, getting onto all the Wi-Fi signals, etc. You are trying to take a break. You are trying to get out in the nature for building that alpha. So you should be well aware of that break. You should be harnessing the potential of that break. And especially if you do get the opportunity to be a part of group chanting or a part of a group meditation practices, please do that because you are serving your brain. You're serving your body. You're serving your consciousness. You are connecting to your mind in a way. I, I talk about golden keys. One of the golden keys that I talked in my previous uh, video was breathing. Breath is like a bridge. It is like a bridge to watch the mind. The second golden key is alpha. If you produce enough alpha every single day, you will see a massive change in your life, your sleep, your health, your wealth, your decision-making abilities, judgment, everything will improve. And the third important thing is taking the advantage of coherence when many people are chanting. It was absolutely beautiful to see these young boys uh, or the young children doing that. A seven-year-old, four hours, absolutely stuck to ground, did not even move, participated with that full intention, with that full focus and attention. If they can do it, 
you and me can definitely do it. So keep watching to us. My job is to bring all the neuroscience part of your daily life, allowing you to have a happy, healthy and successful life. Signing off, Dr. Shweta Aratya from the Limitless Brain Lab.